we're doing front forks. I told you I'm going to do seals, and we're teaching the guys how to uh, recondition these forks. And when I bought the bike, uh, <clears throat> it ended up having a salvage title, and that's always a scary deal because you're like, ah, you know, who repaired it, how bad it was. I'm really not afraid to buy those because a lot of times it's, you know, you get cosmetic and it'll total a bike. But on this bike, knowing that it had a salvage title, I'm paying extra close attention to everything. And so if you look here, when I pulled this fork out, can you see all these gouges and scratches? That sat above where the seal rode, so I wasn't worried about it knocking out the seal from the slider. That wasn't an issue, okay? Uh, it was a little difficult to get out of the triple tree, but here's the service that I'm gonna show you how to do right now is that's how to check and see if these are bent. And I wanna encourage all you techs out there that every single time you do even just seals and you disassemble this fork, you should be checking to make sure these aren't bent and you'll see why in a second. But this one's extra concerning because of the fact that we know it was an accident. So before we head there, let's look at the service manual. <clears throat> and right here we got a Harley Davidson manual and actually pulled up a Honda Common that every mechanic should know this manual we love turning to. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to put it in V-blocks, put a dial indicator. We're going to measure to see if it's, if it's bent, if it has any run out. We want that to be straight as an arrow, right? If we look at Harley here, they're saying that replace the fork tube if the run out exceeds eight thousandths, okay? A point I want to make from the Honda manual here is... Look at what they say here. The actual run out is half of the total indicator reading. So they're saying in the example of the eight thousandths, the actual run out would be four thousandths, okay? So you're gonna see from different manuals, I just randomly, I went and picked uh, a couple Yamaha manuals and theirs just simply said if it was bent, replace it. I looked at a Honda manual and it said, like along here, it says, uh, if it cannot be perfectly straight, uh, with minimal effort. This is where they're talking about trying to straighten them. They make tools where you can put it in a press and try and straighten them. I'm not a big fan because the metal's been stressed and I like uh, the fact that I'm only on two wheels and I'd like it to not be stressed. But with that, with that being said, you might see something different. You have to think about whatever that service manual says, that's what you want to go with. So if you're with Harley, it says eight thou, it's eight thou total. And you can see here, they're just getting into the theory of this. So let's not mix that up. Let's go look at the setup and how to do this. All right, kind of the overview, we're gonna do just like you would in the service manual, like you saw here with the V-blocks. And the other thing I want you to notice here is that we're on really, really solid, heavy supports. When we did this on the workbench, proving a point, just experimenting, literally just pushing on things would cause deflection in the needle, okay? So the other thing you wanna think about is where should you measure? And you can see here, you've got this kind of witness mark here. Can you see where the triple tree went? You got uh, this distance here, another triple tree, and then handlebars. Where this would really bend would be below the bottom triple tree. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the best place to measure this is realistically gonna be here, but you should do it here, and then you should do it here, and you should do it here. We wanna just check it all over the place. Here's where you guys are gonna get into trouble. If, if I'm putting any weight here, you know, do you see where I'm lifting it? See that? Okay, so I wanna make sure that I'm not falsifying the reading. So I'm gonna take this with very minimal effort, let the weight of everything go down. And what we have here is another student, we took his FCR, and he has around five to six thousandths. I think he's, no, I think it's more five thousandths. The reason I'm doing that is I wanna prove a point and I wanna show you how fast this setup is. Here's the worst one that has the actual physical damage on there. I'm gonna square those up. If I was twisted here, that's raised. We'll square that up. Let's go back here, go here, get our equipment set up. Preload that. I'm gonna slide this guy in a bit. Okay, and what I need to also make sure this is a pretty short dial indicator, guys. We'd want to make sure that it has the ability to do enough travel. Now, check out this fork. Look at that. I'll even re zero it. Okay. Think that's bent? Yeah, a little bit. yeah, it sucks as both of them are bent. Here, check this out too. I want, I want to prove a point here. I want to try and see if you can get, let's get focused in here. I want you to pay attention, guys, to the, to the actual needle here. And watch 
You can physically see that raising up and down. Do you see it? A little bit. Yeah. A little, little bit. bit. Let's try and get a little closer here. Okay, ready? There you yeah. go. Frick, holy, I mean, that is unbelievably bent back up. When I put these on here, I was just like, whoa, holy smoke, like that's really bent. And then grabbed the other tube and it was significantly bent. I've rode this bike for a couple hundred miles. Aunt Kim was in town last week. She rode it, I think a couple hundred and there were no complaints and the seals weren't leaking, but you could tell someone had been in there because it was missing parts and uh, the fork oil level was ridiculously low. So, all right, we're gonna go to another way to show this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I want you to bring the camera back. And what you're gonna notice without measuring tools, if I just go like this, it, it, it's very, very difficult to see with the eye. I'll go here and try and help hold that here. Then we'll try and go here. And anytime you can give a reference of something to compare to, you might be able to see it. But would you agree it's almost impossible? Yeah. So check this out. Here's another way to do it. We do a lot of measuring. You guys have seen us do some engine parts mm -hmm. on the granite plate or whatnot. So if I take this guy, if I go here, we're going to prove a point here in a second. He'll grab a flashlight. You can literally see light. Put it on the back side there. Okay, do you see where the light goes away? That's a really good way to prove that it's actually bent. You don't need a dial indicator or anything else. Now go ahead and take that, take the camera back a second. Let's just grab Jesse's that only had that. I mean, guys, this was so bad on mine, I didn't even actually, was it 30 thou or four? I mean, it was ridiculous, right? Okay, so let's go here. Okay, now here's where, it, here's where it pinches in the tree. Let's put the light right here, for example. So I could see a little bit of light under there, right? See that tiny, tiny, yeah. tiny little bit? There's your eight thousandths, right? Yeah. Okay, so we'd love to have it perfect. I mean, this is something that, you can go ahead and pull it back. This is something that isn't gonna be an issue. This is a 1992 with 30 some thousand miles, but you gotta think, these have a big job. We talked about braking and the forces that are involved. Okay. All right, that's just a little tip of the day. Make it a great day. Keep wrenching. Keep wrenching and share this video.